What's up, everybody? Chester oh, ARP Church Devotional Podcast, John 6. Here we go. Choose each winding path our trip. Gives me grace for every trial. Feeds me with the living breath. All right. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. We get started with John chapter 6, Jesus feeding the 5,000. This is what John records of this great miracle. After this, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting his eyes up then, And seeing that a large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy food so that these people may eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they for so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat the people down, about 5,000 in number. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, Gather up the leftover fragments, that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with fragments from five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, This indeed is the prophet who is to come into the world. Perceiving then that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. Now, I love this story. It's a story that uh, is in all four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all tell this story. And it's a wonderful little story about how Jesus feeds the 5,000. John calls it a sign. It's a demonstration of Jesus' power, of Jesus' ability, of Jesus' grace, of Jesus' uh, multiplying uh, love in all those different things, meeting the needs of others, providing for them. It's interesting that John tells us as the people were coming, a large crowd, about 5,000 men, if you put all the stories together. So the crowd's 5,000 men. If you add women and children, you know, the numbers could get up to 25, 30,000 maybe, uh, at least twenty to 30,000, somewhere in that range perhaps, maybe not. Uh, But we don't really know. We just know it was 5,000 men. It's interesting that John gives us the detail that Jesus says to his disciples, hey, hey, where are we going to buy food for all these people? Like he sees them coming, and he says to Philip and to the rest of the disciples, hey, y'all, where are we going to buy food for all these people? What are we going to do for them? It's time to eat, and they're following me. We've got to make provision for them. And Philip says, Lord, 200 denarii, would not be enough to feed this many people for them to get just a taste of food. Now, a denarii was one day's labor. So 200 days labor's worth of money would not be worth, would not be enough, excuse me, to buy enough food for these people to get a little taste of food. Now, Philip is right, but John gives us this little detail that Jesus says this to test him because he knew what he was already going to do. Now, that's an interesting dynamic. That's an interesting detail that John gives us. And John gives it to us, obviously, for a reason. It's from the Holy Spirit. But he gives it to us as an explanatory note, as an interpretive note, with reference to what is going on here. Jesus knows exactly what he's about to do. He knows all things. John is clear that Jesus, though veils his omniscience and his divine characteristics in some ways, his omnipresence, etc., he veils that by human flesh. He still maintains those characteristics as the divine son of God. And so he knows exactly what he's going to do. Andrew says, hey, listen, there's this boy over here. He's got five loaves and two fish. Jesus says, bring them to me. But Andrew's like, what is that going to do? Philip says, there's not enough food. We can't find, We can't buy enough food. We don't have the money to buy enough food. Philip, Andrew says, listen, we've got five loaves and two fish. What's that going to do? Right? They, they haven't learned yet that God can do the impossible. Right? You remember when, when the angel told Mary that she would conceive and bear the Lord Jesus Christ? And she said, how can that be since I'm still a virgin? And, and the angel said, with man, uh, with God, all things are possible. With man, some things are impossible. But with God, all things are impossible. 
And, and so in this particular case, Jesus is about to show them how powerful, how mighty, how glorious, how wonderful, how gracious he is in this feeding of the 5,000. So he takes the loaves, he gives thanks, and he breaks the loaves, and he breaks up the fish, and he distributes to all as they had need or all as they wanted. And it's interesting, they ate all that they wanted. So they fill, they ate their fill, and what was left over was exactly 12 basketfuls, right, of food in order to provide for the disciples. So Jesus says, I'm not only going to feed them, I'm going to feed you, I'm going to feed everybody here. The people saw this and they said, man, this indeed is the prophet who has come into the world because they're starting to realize that Jesus is doing amazing stuff. They're starting to say, you know what, this guy fed us, this guy provided for us, this guy's healing us. Uh, From a very materialistic point of view, they're getting every need met. And so they're saying, indeed, this guy is the, the the prophet who has come into the world. the the point of the The point of the miracles, as we've said many times in John's Gospel, is to point them to the reality of who Jesus is. But they don't necessarily understand him as he is. They they recognize, and we'll see this in a moment. Uh, next time we read this, the other side of the lake, they're coming to follow him, and Jesus says, "You came because you ate, and got full." But Jesus recognizes the the nature of the crowd. This guy can feed us. This guy's healing. This guy's doing signs. Let's seize him. Let's make him king. He'll free us from the Roman oppression. He'll give us everything we ever needed. And so Jesus recognized at that moment that they were going to come and take him by force to make him king. He withdraws to the mountain himself. As I read this, I think, one, obviously this is a story of God's provision and God's ability through Jesus Christ to provide for his people uh, in wonderfully miraculous and great ways. And so we should never doubt his ability to provide for his people to meet their needs. Two, though, I think is interesting is that we have to recognize that the provision that God brings into our lives is to show us who he is and reveal himself in a way to us so that we would trust him with our lives. And so the more he provides, the more we trust him. The call in these people's life was not to make Jesus king from a materialistic standpoint or from a human standpoint or an earthly standpoint. The call in their lives was to trust Jesus as the Son of God, to follow him, to put their lives in his hands. And that's the call on us as well. We can get married materialistic. We want this, we want this, we want this, we want this. And we wonder if we'll ever be able to get what we want. And we want God to provide those things. Right? And, and there are places in the scriptures God says we should ask for the desires of our hearts. But ultimately, the call in our heart is to trust him. And the goal for the Christian is to live a life that is devoted to Christ spiritually as we live for him, follow him, and direct ourselves to lead us into his kingdom uh, by the way we live our lives. And so that's the challenge for us today as we learn to follow him more faithfully. You guys take care. God bless you. Have a great one. We'll see you next time. Carry me close to your heart And surely your goodness and mercy will follow